Angelina Kaf started the streaming and I will put the link on the chat. Ah, yes. Uh, yes. Participants, please note the link we have given in the chat box for live streaming. You can give the link to your friends to watch. Dear participants, welcome you all. Just wait for 10 minutes. Time is 3.50. Sharply at 4 o'clock, we will begin the session.
ಹಾಕಬೇಕು ಹಾ ಓ
sunshine is a welcome thing. It brings a lot of brightness. Good evening to all. It is my pleasant duty to bid you all a genial welcome. A warm welcome to our principal, Reverend Dr. S. Mary Hilda, and Vice Principal, Mrs. C. Satya Lakshmi, ma'am. We welcome you, sister and ma'am. I would like to extend my warm welcome to our resource person, Dr. Christy Paulina, Head of the Department and IQAC Coordinator at Bishop Caldwell College, Maravan Madam Tutukudi. She has been a soft skills trainer at Infant Jesus College and worked at St. Mary's College. She has also been a client consultant at Wolseley Private Limited at UK. She has been a resource person in six national conferences and webinars. She has conducted four regional workshops for students. She has organized one international webinar, two national conferences, two faculty development programs, and six national webinars. She has edited three books and also served as an guest editor in an international journal. We heartily welcome you, ma'am. We are delighted to welcome all the professors and research scholars and students from various institutions to the second day of the international webinar series. Welcome one and all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, at this juncture, on this uh, second day of the FTP program, I am very much happy to be here as a resource person. And also, I thank the principal of uh, Holy Cross Home Science College, vice principal, and the head of the Department of English, Angelin Priyaka. I used to call her Raka. Now she, she is, uh, uh, we've been together, she's my senior, and she's also a very good friend of mine. I welcome you. Uh, I'm very much uh, uh, happy to be here, Raka. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity. And also, I will thank uh, at this time, I have to thank my mentors and my friends over here uh, who have been motivating me for uh, being a resource person. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, uh, I'm sharing the screen, Raka. Can I share? Okay, Pauline, but uh, the screen is not visible. Yeah, 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 yeah. For that, um, Holly, can I give an announcement? Yes, if I can give the announcement, I'll be waiting. All uh, right, participants, welcome you all and welcome Dr. Christy Paulina. Uh, my sister and uh, my great friend and he uh, she is the one who organized this uh, um, webinar and he helped her she helped to help me very much and uh, so thank you for uh, also I welcome you all participants and uh, if uh, you are if anyone is ready to present the paper today we will give time uh, after the lecture given by Christi, for Dr. Christy Palina so you can message me about your name and your title and I can be, I can call your name and you can present your papers. So now it's time to hear from Dr. Christy Paulina. Over to Dr. Christy Paulina. Thank you. Thank you, Akka. Thank you so much. 
And so today, uh, when we were uh, discussing, me and Angel and Nakha were discussing about the conference uh, program. So we were thinking of giving an importance to the famous uh, dramas or plays and the novels in any genre. We were discussing about it, and that came up because this COVID was having uh, is having a great impact on and everybody. And what is what what is very important and what are we facing now is the question that has been arising nowadays and so we were discussing and all the resource person we, we, we had a meeting and we discussed on few things that we would like to share for the seven days so I decided to take on the per perspective of conflict which we are currently facing in today's world so uh, why did I choose a lot of the flies might be a question because a uh, lot of the flies william golding's lot of the flies you know it is it is might it might look as a simple uh, novel but it you know when we look into it we ourselves as adults what are we teaching our students being professors and research scholars what are we imparting to our students is that what matters so uh, we i i wanted to talk about the conflict uh, a detailed a description on conflict that we ourselves as human beings are facing in today's world so uh, when we talk about conflict what is conflict so right from uh, the creation of man from Bible when we talk about Adam and Eve there is a conflict between good and evil but where does that evil come from where we it is a question because Adam and Eve Adam and Eve are the first human beings and they've been deceived by uh, Satan the snake we all know that but the conflict of good and evil starts right from the Garden of Eden. So, how that was that that started and it was an evolution started and all that has come. So, I don't want to be very detailed about all the ages. So, I have I would like to talk about from the age of doubt because uh, William Golding has a lot of connection with science. Yesterday, Dr. Benison was talking about science and literature. So, uh, we can talk about that here where science have a imp greater impact on the literature, where that has become a, an age of doubt. So, Darwin's theory of evolution, we doubt God and naturally people started to believe on science more. So, what, ha what comes later, people lost humanity and there comes war. Wars are, might be violent and quiet. But it is, however, always present in everywhere. So conflict is observable in very niche of humanity, even within a classroom. We can see that there are race between the classroom. There is race between staff members. There are conflicts in the departments. There are conflicts in the college. There are conflicts in the family. So conflict is unavoidable. That's what William Golding is very much clear in his uh, Lord of the Flies. So. A conflict in a small scale it rises from a uh, house where it is on a big scale it goes to war so uh, but conflict studies uh, many of us are not aware of conflict studies but conflict studies is something which it is a branch of uh, I would say it is a branch of study in social science that identifies and analyzes violent and non-violent behaviors as well as a structural mechanisms attending conflicts including social conflicts with a view towards understanding those processes which lead to more desirable human conditions. This is what uh, conflict studies is about. So we need to go get to understand what is what a human condition is. So uh, uh, we would be de de dealing uh, very much detail about William Golding. Why, do, why did William Golding talk about conflict in his first novel, which is considered to be failure, initially but then it became a very big success so why was his novel why did he concentrate most on conflict is because he is a person who taught english and philosophy and he was a member in the royal navy so he witnessed the two wars and when he wanted uh, when he wrote this lord of the flies why did he uh, the, why did he choose children in the novel because he wanted to show that uh, conflict uh, conflict does not come suddenly. It is 
in an innate nature of man that is what he wanted to show and uh, the impact of war has made um, has made him uh, too much to uh, concentrate on the uh, concentrate on conflict so uh, he is telling it very clearly that uh, anyone who moved those spheres without understanding that man produces evil as a bee produces honey so it is an innate nature of man and uh, it is in the interest with ourselves how do we deal with the conflict is what that matters so his teaching experience it is the participation of war which fruitful people think that war is a fruitful material but it is not so so uh, when war ended golding returned back to teaching and that's the reason he wanted to tell to the world that uh, children learn from the adult world that is what he wanted to tell so uh, how the innate nature of man is causing ca chaos and conflict so in this uh, uh, lord of the flies his characters experience an apocalyptic vision which is essentially necessary to disclose that sufferings are experienced on the blunders committed and the inability of the modern man to understand and control the problematic of his nature that is ultimate truth where uh, we do not understand if we do not understand how to analyze and control our uh, problematic nature we would definitely would be in a, pro a trouble so this is what William Golding would like to tell where uh, he is telling that if the man is free when you talk about existentialism man is free to take choices but once we are free, we are not human beings. That is what William Golding tells. So, you need to uh, accept our nature and we need to learn to control it to be a normal human being. And he also talks about William Golding. He delves very much deeper into the human psyche and he also discusses the knowledge of good and evil. Because, uh, because when we do not identify what is good and evil, when we do not go, when we do not control our our behavior, it it is the cause of the fall of man, as we know about Adam and Eve. So, Golden clearly emphasizes the contemporary evils. It is the it is responsible, and it is very much challenging for the soul of man. So, Lord uh, Lord of the Flies, as I already told, it was uh, published after twenty one rejections, but after the filming of Lord of the Flies, all uh, became very much famous. And it is very much riddled with, uh, it's very much riddled with, full of uh, symbolism. So, uh, most of us know what Lord of the Flies is. So, I would put it in a nutshell, a group in the world war, a group of uh, ch children, school children, you know, uh, who were told to be from aristocratic families. Those children, were, when they were traveling by, uh, uh, by airplanes, was crashed in an island. So the children survived, but the pilots were not by pilots deceased. So the children wanted to uh, wanted order first, and later they wanted to enjoy the island. Later they forgot themselves that they are human beings. So this is a nutshell what they are. So the character it is Ralph, Jack, and Roger, and Piggy the most important character. But symbolism is talking about. Ralph it is talking about he is a chief and little children they are uh, what uh, what our children what they do they look at the parents and they do what they want so these children are following the orders of the older children because the age of the children is from 16 to 6 to 12 and the conch is the uh, talking about civilization where it, it, it uh, Ralph chooses it to um, Ralph chooses it to have an assembly and it is it, it, it is a form of order I would say and the beast which is it is in among ourselves the beast which uh, Golding tells everyone. So there are two main conflicts which is talking about external conflict and internal conflict. So external conflict it is very 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 much which we are very much affected by. So external conflict it pits a person against another human or against an animal or an object or forces of nature or any other aspect or situations outside of him 
this is what which we are now facing external conflict covid 19 is again an external conflict where many people are trying to adapt ourselves we are trying to adapt ourselves to the conflict but some people are in a verge of a, a failure when they wanted to do this uh, internal conflict obviously it talks about the inner struggle within our human psyche this is what is both the conflicts but uh, we would be dealing with more of the conflicts of external and internal conflicts where uh, Golding has given a, 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 a great description of what are the kinds of conflicts that the children are facing. So through the children what message he wants to give the adult world. So that's what we're going to see. So this is the internal conflict. So it's talking about Jack. Okay, Jack uh, is uh, might be looking at an antagonist. But he was equally a good boy at the start of the island. Every children wanted to have a leader, wanted to wear in an assembly and they divided themselves as hunters and they would be shelled, uh, people who would build shelters, they divided their work equally. But when did this internal conflict come? So well, why did Jack wanted to be a hunter? So the children were not used to be a hunter, uh, was not uh, hunters. But when they come here, they think that food and shelter are very important. So what do they do for food? They need to hunt. So pigs are there. So when Jack wanted to do hunting, when he falls, he when he want, when he failed to get a pig, you know his internal conflict busts up. Why can't I kill? Why can't I do this? So that failure he is not able to accept. So the frustration and that weariness, all that becomes becomes makes him a savage. That was the starting which was making him to become a stale savage, and that was making him to create chaos among the group mates so this is the first internal conflict which we see uh, from jack uh, not only jack fa faces internal conflict uh, conflict also ralph the later part of our uh, uh, novel he also has that internal conflict but i'm giving you an example of jack so external conflict ralph and jack again they two are uh, considered to be equals so when there is an equal there is a struggle for power so again that's an external conflict so ralph is first elected as leader but later jack resents this and he gradually tries to uh, take away ralph's leadership and he wanted to establish his own violent society where he has ultimate power then ralph uh, attempts to establish and maintain a democratic society for which jack has no respect so the children were in a democratic uh, society. But what happened to them when they come to this island? They do not want democracy. They wanted to be uh, a dictator. Jack wanted to be a dictator. Ralph wanted a democratic world. So there is a clash of, uh, uh, clash of inter two great uh, leaders over there, I would say. And but there are followers, people who are thinking rationally and who people who are thinking irrationally. So, there are three examples that which I have taken for external conflict. The first one is there was ship. The, ch the children wanted uh, to attract the ship. So, uh, they were taking turns to burn uh, uh, woods on a hilltop. But the group failed because of the enjoyment of becoming they do not want to obey ralph or <clears throat> they do not want to be under control they were enjoying which later became uh, a savagery later and the children were turning barbaric but they left this and this created havoc this created a uh, fight and that was the first external conflict and next the children little children they say that they were beast that is beast but the beast is what uh, Piggy tells us. It is not beast. When when Simon is dead, he says that beast is among us. This is what uh, Golding wanted to tell us. There is a beast in everybody. And how do we handle that beast? How do we uh, how do we handle it? And how do we uh, uh, control our behavior? It is what that matters. Next, it is it is talking about <coughs> pigs. So you want to be a hunter. So hunting doesn't stop with pigs. Hunting <coughs> started to uh, go with uh, people also. There were three deaths in. There were three deaths in the 
uh, island. So that talks about beast. So uh, here we, when we talk about conflict, external, internal, among uh, those conflicts, there are four uh, things that Golding would like to uh, share uh, in his novel. It is that conflicts are usually verbal arguments, but it can also lead to a physical violence. But there are four conflicts that he would like to share. That is man versus nature, man versus man, man versus self and man versus society. So, first we would be talking about man versus nature. So, uh, when we talk about man versus nature, we would be saying what, what, what is there much to do with man versus nature. So, in this, uh, in this particular novel, uh, Golding has given a beautiful description of how this nature, the children were not able to cope up with the nature. So, they had to have first conflict is with the nature because they, the children are stranded on an island. They need to find food, they need to find fresh water, they need to create shelter from the hot sun and they also need to navigate the wine creepers and dangerous pink granite rock. So, this visualizes the relation between the boys and the island to show the relation of every character with nature. So, uh, these are this, <coughs> this is what it is. First, it is isolation. You know, uh, we know how our COVID isolation was tormenting us how it was challenging. So, the same thing, the children were in isolation and the children have to <coughs> tend themselves, you know, they have to look after themselves, they have to uh, have, uh, they have to have bath, they have to look after themselves and there are six year old, they have to look after themselves and they, are, uh, first frustration is they find that there are no grown ups. So, the children, that is what isolation, when a person is in isolation, the real character comes out. When there are nobody to control them. So, first is isolation. Next is the hunt. With no adults to help, the children have to gather their own food. So, they have to adapt to it. So, Jack was becoming more of a hunter. Then, again, deadly forest. It is very much, they do not know what, what kind of animals are there, what kind of insects are there. And even if they are bitten by anything, these children do not know what to do. And the children are not used to this tropical climate. England is have all the time this, uh, having a climate of cold climate where the children find the climate to be very, very hot. So, that is again. Then it, so, when the children are in isolation, when they do not know what to do, when they are under a grave situation, the psychology changes, the human psychology changes and the relation between the environment changes. And uh, when these all changes, the political system also changes. So, when Ralph was chosen to be a leader. This uh, clash between the nature where the children were not able to cope up with order, their children started to show their bad behavior. And this is what we, uh, we, can, we can very much witness it in COVID itself. How people were panicking, how people were not in order, how they were going and they were uh, accumulating things which was not available to other people, even not in an um, our country, even in England and in the USA, all that was happening. So, when you when you start of isolation, you think more about yourself. <clears throat> so, again, Jack, uh, he was hunting pigs and at the end, he fired the forest. So, this is what the children are. The children were in uniforms, neatly dressed, but once they came into the island, they were with bad skin, a bad body and... Uh, they started to paint their faces. They were typically, they were turning to be barbarians. So, when uh, uh, through Jack, Golding shows that these children were not in love with nature. They could not adapt themselves to nature. Instead, the fantasy of the, the fantasy of uh, uh, the nature has changed. The fantasy changed into nightmares for them. Because they were fearful of the beast. So, uh, nature became very, very bad for them and they started to fear. So, this is what uh, the first problem started. And the second type, uh, it is the Simon who finds beauty and peace in the nature. For him, nature is part of, is not a part from man. So, he is nature as Ralph. And he did not contribute in hunting. So, he was staying at the beach. He was looking into the beach. He was building shelters. He was created prior for the rescue. All these things, there were certain boys they were doing. So, so there were uh, Ralph, the group of Ralph loved nature and the others hated. 
man versus man again it is ralph versus jack so the two continue to argue <coughs> with each other as they both want to be in charge so because they both are equals <coughs> excuse me and they both are off opposites and jack breaks off and forms his own tribe so again when we talk about the conflict it is in the entire story there is a conflict between ralph and jack and when they grow stronger the more the boy the more they grow stronger the more they become barbaric i would say not savages they became barbaric so because the two boys initially had a strong bond which later dissolved into complete hatred because a man hunt of another because uh, when we when we see the children uh, jack and roger had and uh, they did not regret when they killed simon and when they when they killed simon <coughs> so this is what this is what the boys were looking after looking into they did not feel when 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 uh, uh, ralph was crying for red the children didn't bother so ralph owns leadership and civilization well jack represents savagery and wants anarchy on the island both boys wanting to have overall power so in the beginning ralph was voted to have power and lead the boys while well, towards the end jack takes control and uses the boys as hunters until all the boys are part of the anarchy society besides ralph so there was a situation where once we can we can very much golding visualizes it and he beautifully tells that how and uh, how the fear of a dictator you know you go behind them fearing for their life ralph is an rational person he does not go violently initially i would say but it was ral it was jack who had uh, control and later he he took the control of all the boys and man was a self so this is very important each and every one of us have an uh, kind of man was a self again it is an internal conflict where a character struggles with making choices being honest or doing the right thing so this is where ralph stays stands for because you know uh, jack is very much determined to be a savage but ralph is questioning himself where am i what am i to do what has to be done he struggles within himself and he doesn't know what to do why am i standing alone what have i to do what am i to do when all the boys are with them they are hunting and they are killing what am i to do he doesn't know so he is in this despite he is a full of goodness he want to be civilized he also became at last to save his life he became a savage so there was an internal conflict so piggy's piggy also had an internal conflict of self esteem when they when his uh, uh, specs were pulled off so uh, every human beings we have an internal conflict with self but the children are not matured enough to get, have it as such ralph loses his uh, loses his temper and ultimately he also became uh, uh, he also decided to be violent at the end so man with a society it is the conflict between the boys and the way they old life back so they are becoming they are turning back into uh um, the olden age they would not want to be in order they wanted to be as tribal people so they do not uh, the boys first to know that they should continue to act as they did back home with rules and first they decided to be with rules and manners but later it disappeared a sense of civilization and to be proper dissipate quickly as the boys realized there is no one there to enforce these rules upon them so golding uh very much in his novel tells that when men are forced under rules uh under rules they are in order when when the men are given freedom they are that is chaos this is what he tells but where do the children learn to the savage from <clears throat> they learned it from the society they learned from the adult world they they were painting their faces they were having spears they were having sticks where did they learn from they learned from the adult world so the adult world is responsible for the children to be what they are that is what man is a society so what we are telling the the, the me now in this today's world we are telling facebook or pubg or whatever we are against it so the society is making the little children to be more uh, rude or more barbaric or more savage they are killing one another and they are fighting and the children are into the visual virtual media which is very 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 dangerous 
so this is what is man with the society and very much clearly golding says that the adult world is responsible for the children to be what they are to be what the behavior they, they got from um, their parents or from their uh, people over there in england is what making them to be savage so this is what the conflicted in that boys show that they have society standards they choose not to and uh, now we, we have to talk about rationality and irrationality where uh, obviously we know ralph is rational and jack is irrational so again learning from the grown ups the children are turning into they were rational but why are they why there is war why they are killing innocent people that is again irrationality so rational thinking was disappearing when fear starts to pile up irrational thinking comes so when the children started to first talk about bees no one believed later when they were continuously talking about bees they started to believe but simon is the only one person who was in rational thinking telling that there is no bees and there is bees in us so when a person is thinking rationally he is put to death so that is what happened irrational irrational where, where he when he is a, when he, a rational being when he is very much rational and when he wanted to impart his rational thinking to others this be the boys you know mistook him as a beast and they killed him where did that rational thinking go for ralph and the group they were irrational so simon clearly proves this piggy so uh, again piggy specks uh, we we say the first civilization was only uh, the invention of fire so the children did not have fire they used piggy's glasses and they and they were violent in uh, taking the glasses from him and they have fire over there why this fire again st is the starting of civilization but that itself became the end of their life in their island so ralph's fear for the unknown and his lack of spirituality is again the cause of his fall so he was not believing himself he is a rational person he started to have doubt he started to have fear so fear is the end of rational thinking but simon was not afraid of all the beast he goes near it he examines it and he interprets the world through logic and reality simon is not a prey to illusion and is witness when jack ralph and roger is astonished to see the pilot with the parachute on the mountain top flies around the said has been mistaken as a beast but though these children know that these children were very much against simon and when simon was coming for the children out of curiosity out of fantasy out of uh, a barbaric nature they killed him so we can talk about the first assembly meeting translates to a ritual dance which was the death of simon and it is the children who were having illusion and this illusion was illusion that irrational thinking of that is the reason that uh, killed simon so evil does not affect him and golding portrays him to possess god like qualities when he visualized as christ figure as jesus was met by satan simon is also threatened by the lord of the flies so simon is actually a christ figure and the death of simon is said to be death of god so death of god talking about the rationality it is the death of rationality so irrational the children were irrational they were savage they barbarians they were, they were for blood thirst i would say because they were hunting pigs mercilessly equally they were hunt when they when simon was killed no one was worried so ralph's rational society was affected and he became a pathetic figure because his heroic glamour because he started to be fearful his heroic glamour disappears and he when he forgets his wounds his hunger and thirst and became fear on flying feet to save his life so he himself became uh, uh started to doubt himself he does not believe in himself so that became a flying feat and he wanted to save his life so it, at most when he wanted to save his life he became uh, one like ralph so uh, we we can talk about um, jack and ralph both are irrational Some, at the end when we say they are irrational so jack he wanted to track down and kill that was swallowing him up he was talking about he needed to be jack tells that he needed to be violent because if he is not violent some evil is going to have him so this is what uh, uh, this is what jack tells and ralph again he 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 was stabbed and he was snarling with a spear and savage doubled up so more than jack Ra ralph was becoming to be very much irrational 
Why? Because he, he, his fear of life, his fear of life was making him to be very much irrational. Again, laws of innocence. Children are said to be full of innocence. Where here it is said to be <coughs> laws of innocence. So, laws of innocence uh, is what Golding is trying to say. Because they are torn from civilization, they are forced to be self-sufficient, then the individuals undergo moral and behavioral change. So, result there is loss of innocence and there is a uh, dilemma between responsibility and desire. So, which we can very well see um, in Ralph where uh, he is a responsible boy. He wanted, he, he has given, uh, he divided the group uh, to hunt food uh, and uh, he, he divided people to build shelter and he divided people to take care of the fire to attract ships. So, he was a responsible leader. But Jack, he was not like that. He wanted to be uh, a person who, who is after desire. So, when somebody goes behind desire, there is a loss of innocence. So, when did this loss of innocence, is? this also the, sh the shelters built were on fire, uh, the, the cruiser, they left the cruiser ship and Ralph, when Ralph, the, when the children were going behind Ralph to kill him, there is the uh, laws of innocence and the darkness of man's heart. So, the island mm. uh, set, which is set upon fire indicates the boys glamour towards the island. First, the children were very happy in the island. You know, they were going around the island. They wanted to find what is there and they were uh, having ritual dance, all that. But what happened at the end? They, they lit the entire island on fire. So, the fantasy that they had towards the island is lost. So, the, uh, ultimately, the Edenic Garden has been turned to hell. So, Ral's faith is simple and he had childlike qualities. But when he was weeping, when he saw an army, army officer, when he has come for his rescue, he is, uh, Golden clearly tells that that is an end of innocence. And Piggy's belief, in fact, Piggy, Pig, uh, when we talk about Big Piggy's belief, it is to prove to be, uh, uh, people say it's very much false, his belief. And violence takes the lives of three wives. So the, uh, when the cry of Ralph is the ultimate ending, telling that it is the end of innocence. Now, what is between good and evil? Civilization versus savagery. So, he compares, Golding compares the instinct of civilization with savagery with evil. Where the boys appear to be civilized, moral and disi disciplined initially, but... And progressively they become, uh, each character in different degrees, uh, I would say Roger is said to be more sadistic and more, uh, and more are, uh, I would say very much insufficient and they became barbarians or savages in different degrees. So, Golding implies that civilization can mitigate but never wipe out the innate evil. So, this is what is uh, telling when a child is born, there is an innate evil in human being. So, as a bee produces honey, man produces evil. That is what is said in the, uh, that is what Golding ha is trying to uh, tell the readers that the children does not become barbarians as such. They were controlled when they were in school, when they were at home. There were adults to control them and they were taught how to be. But here, once when they are free, they do not know. Only the innate evil started to pop up. Their goodness was shattered. Rational thinking was shattered. So, when these children gave the bloody offering to the beast, it talks about how powerful and innate evil is among them. Even their childhood childhood innocence is destroyed. So, uh, I would like to uh, give a comparison of um, Eden and Garden of Eden with Lord of the Flies. So, first it is the potential sin where the child children also were very pure like Adam and Eve. But, when it comes to selfish cravings, uh, what to say? They do evil. And now, we, when we were uh, doing our MA, our teacher used to, when we, when our, one of our teacher, she took uh, Paradise Lost. She gave a beautiful explanation why he, uh, Eve shared the apple with Adam. The first Eve uh, uh, sin was committed by Eve. But why did she pull Adam into her uh, evil? Because uh, she doesn't want Adam to be happy. That, that is where the innate nature of human being is. I did something wrong, you also have to do. If I don't study, you also don't study. 
if I do something wrong, you also come with me because they do not want to take responsibility of their choices. They do not want to take. So, so they want somebody to be along with them. And that is why the innate nature of <coughs> Eve, you know, Ralph alone was barbaric. But later, the entire group was a barbaric as Adam was added to Eve. Second, innocence of Adam and Eve was destroyed. The innocence of the boy was, uh, children were destroyed. The first, uh, Jack, uh, the taste of killing, the taste of killing when Jack was uh, very much happy when he killed a pig, that made him to be a hunter and that made him to lose the sense of humanity, that, that made him to lose the sense of goodness in himself. This is the same thing with Eve. When they started to do uh, evil, when they were chased, when they were chased out of uh, the Garden of Eden, and every human being started to have evil. So condemnation. So Ralph is being hunted. The boys are met by a naval officer on that. They realize and feel the weight of barbaric and and later they feel how they are, how they were dressed. They were dressed very neat. And now how they are? They were as tribal people. So the same thing with. Uh, Adam and Eve, the eyes were opened and then they felt that what they did was wrong. So, there comes the uh, innocence. They felt the innocence was lost. So, even Adam and Eve, when God came and asked, they felt, oh my God, we did wrong. So, this is what um, Adam and Eve uh, were talking about. And when we talk about the conclusion, it is, World War II caused a greater impact on human emotions and human feelings and civilization is exposed to the threat of extinction. And the island in Golding's now helps them to have self-revelation, which brings out the true nature of man. So this is what uh, 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 this is what uh, Golding wants to bring up. And when I have uh, gone for a, a conference, and uh, uh, we were, when there was a discussion of Lord of the Flies by another author, uh, they were uh, clearly they were asking uh, them why did Golding chose children instead of adults. Uh, and why did Golding show blood thirst among the children? Why did he choose that? This is not a comp why did he why did he make the children to be horror white people? Why did he do this? This is what uh, is a question that everybody asks. And uh, uh, we, we, we have to we have to accept that violence is right there from the children right from the birth. What they see, they act. Okay. <clears throat> when they when 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 they are going for war, they kill people. The children see bombings, all that. So these children learn from the adults. So as adult, what we want to do, we have to be uh, good people so that our younger generation would be good. So when 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 uh, when the parents are able to control their conflict, then they when they when the parents are able to control their behavior when they have a conflict. Or when they have a problem, when the, when the, when the, when they are rational in taking a decision, ultimately the children will also be rational in taking their decision in future life. This is what Golding clearly tells uh, the readers: If you, as an adult, being rational, your children would be rational. If you are irrational, your child would be irrational. Your behavior uh, or shadows, I would say that overshadowing your children. So, you, you have to live what you are. You have to be good in order to have good generation. So, the boys, uh, in like the adult world, they involve in the world of destruction. So, the group led by Ralph and group led by Jack are rendered as a parody of the society of adults who engage in destroying the other. This is what is happening. A, a group, uh, a sector, a group of people affecting and destroying the other group where uh, the death of the other person uh, is 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 the happiness of the other group so this is what they are this is what war talks about when hundreds of people in japan were killed the americans were happy so why were they happy okay pearl harbor again so uh, people can be pointing out fall people can people can be pointing out the uh, uh, sin which was created or which was done by the other party but they get happiness when somebody is doomed so the same thing was happening with ralph and Jack, when Jack killed somebody, they were happy. They were not in tears. Only Ralph was in tears. So that's what talking about Ralph is having rational behavior and uh, Jack is an irrational behavior. And temptation and condemnation go hand in hand 
and the inner battle of purity and achievement we have to have an inner battle and what comes out is what matters what comes out what we are good or bad or we are uh, in a frustration mode you are throwing something even that becomes uh, that becomes a violent behavior so this is what golding talks about and the conflict that we are facing in today's world when we are having this covid how we react do we follow the government do we follow everything is what that matters we we, we have financial conflicts we have uh, uh, when we talk about scholars they have their conflict in education or whatever everything how do we handle the situation is the what matters and golding clearly tells that in this novel that our responsibility it is our responsibility to be good no nobody can come and push into it but as an adult we are responsible for the life of the younger generation our students our children our uh, children next door because they learn through what they see so this is what is my presentation about if anybody is having questions you can ask falling ma'am your voice is breaking so no, i finished aka is it ma'am your voice is breaking still now still now hello right ma'am someone has uh, muted christy ma'am is it Oh. oh from when from when it was muted from when it was muted ma'am you have muted your audio please turn on your microphone i yes, have yes, yes. i didn't mute aka yes, somebody yes. muted yeah so from yes, where, yes. from from where it was left uh, out yes just now just now only just okay, now only okay okay anybody have any questions they can ask Yeah, finished. Yeah. Okay. Uh, participants, if you have any questions, please ask to Dr. Pusti Polina. No questions yes, to I, ask. Yes, I can share your PPT. I will share it with Angel and Akan. She would be giving it to you. No problem. Also put your questions. Yeah, uh, uh, Omnisha Bhattacharya, ma'am, I can take questions. I can take questions. No problem. If anybody want to want some questions, your time. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, this is Omnisha. Uh, yeah. uh, firstly, uh, that was really. I mean, it was really intellectually stimulating to be, you know, hearing you focus so minutely and. Uh, a uh, lot of the slides is something that i read uh, in my uh, uh, plus 2 and i uh, revisited it again uh, because i want to write on it uh, for my uh, one of my college assignments so and i want to take a bit of a theoretical approach to it do you think uh, see uh, uh, i was thinking there was this theory of bakhtin that is carnivalesque which like allows for our subconscious characteristics to come out only uh, during festivity by under masks and uh, you know something that society that is rational society does not allow carnivalesque uh, covers all that yeah. so do you uh, could you say that what the boys did only after initially only after uh, applying paint to their face by concealing their faces do you think that could be uh, uh, looked at from a you know carnivalesque uh, 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 angle uh uh you know you are talking about t- telling me that uh, did the ch- ch- children's behavior changed only after painting their faces am i correct yes ma'am and also how like the mask motif you know if you mask could motive, you know you know, as, uh, you know everybody is in mask motif uh, when you go to when a child for example even an lkg child when they go to school they mask themselves yeah. to the teacher the activities at the house is different and it is uh, different at home so uh, masking is initially right from uh, when a child uh, like when they are 3 years when when they, when it knows the mother is going to scold or do something the child goes and hides and i see you took my son so yeah. the uh, masking you it, it need not be taught it is there with every human being and 
uh, when you talk about the boys on the island, it was not the masking that there happened only after painting their faces. It started initially because when the conch was chosen, because of when whoever has the conch was said to be uh, the leader. And Ralph had found the conch. Piggy and Ralph found the conch. And um, R uh, Jack was not for it. He was resentful right from the first. And so he was seeing every opportunity to take the boys away from him. So that is what uh, hunting started right from the first. After the first hunting, they started to paint their faces. So I would say this, it's not after painting, it is before that. And obviously, every human being, every child has a mask. Yes. Yes, Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, one other questions? Any other questions? And I would uh, agree with uh, Biswajit Mohanta, sir. Yes, it is like, you know, it has to be self-sufficient and innate evil, it is exi it has exist, it's innate nature. Evil, <clears throat> human beings produce evil as bee produces honey. That's, that, that's the thing that Golding tells about. Thank you, thank you, sir. I think that is kindly a conflict of desire and conflict of deserve. So uh, that is again uh, a fight between Ralph and Jack, right? Because conflict of deserve, uh, Jack uh, Ralph is said to be a good uh, chief uh, who, who wanted to lead the team, but there was uh, fear which did not allow. Uh, Ralph to be the chief. This is what the conflict of des deserving ab uh, is about. Uh, children, uh, the little children were forced to get into the group of Ralph, uh, uh, sorry, group of Jack, only because of violence. You know, he was having power. When you have more children, more people, he was pulling everybody. And the death of Simon, death of uh, Simon, again, that is what terrorized the children. So, uh, Jack um, is a person who is not deserved to be a chieftain, but uh, Ralph, who is deserved to be a leader, is not given that. That is a conflict. And he was forced to run for his life. Again, uh, when we talk about conflict of desire, that is conflict of desire among all the people. In taking uh, the spectacles of Piggy, we can see how there is conflict of desire. And uh, they forget to light the wooden, uh, they forget to light the, uh, the uh, wood when they want to attract the ships. There is again conflict of desire where they, they, they do not want to get rescued. They want to have a fantasy. This is what the clash started from. So that is uh, obviously, that is a uh, conflict of desire where the children does not want to be in order and they wanted to enjoy the life in the island and they were, were in the fantasy world. They forgot that they have to be rescued. They forgot that they have to return to their world. This is what is a conf conflict of desire and deserve. Obviously, Jack took away the position of Ralph only because of only through fear and not through proper leadership quality. Thank you. Uh, the joy to the art of the yes. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. you have given a wonderful session. So, you have child explained the civilization and the conflict, and you have compared the Eden to the lot of flies. So it's a very wonderful session and the participants are very 
um, satisfied with the today's program. So thank you, thanks a lot. And now uh, the feedback link will be shared shortly. And now it's time to hear the paper, uh, the presentation from Upanisha, a research scholar in Upanisha Nidham Inverse Institute, Kwaimtu. So her paper is entitled "The Language of Liberation." So, Upanisha, are you ready to present your paper? Oh yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes. 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 You are audible. Yes. Begin. Uh, good. E good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm presenting a paper which is entitled "The Language of Liberation," based on the works of Toni Morrison. Uh, Toni Morrison is generally read as an author who describes the torment of slavery and the experiences of the African-American community post-slavery. So it is generally looked upon as a period of trauma. And it is true that Toni Morrison does depict trauma, but even in her depiction of trauma, she talks about liberation. The metaphors and the language. Hello. Uh, can I continue? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can continue. You can continue. Yes. So, uh, as I was just mentioning, uh, though uh, it is a depiction of trauma, the metaphors and uh, the examples of language, the figures of speech used by her, depict a sense of liberation. In her first novel, The Bluest Eye, the character of Pecola Breed Love is shown as descending into schizophrenia but even in her experience of schizophrenia she is shown to be experiencing a metaphor of flying she is shown in the middle of the garbage of the town of lorraine at the coda of the novel but even in this position she seems to be flapping her arms like wings in a desire to fly even uh, prior to this example in the same novel the bluest tie we see Mrs. McTeer, who always loves to sing the blues. And this is a matter of great joy to her children also, Claudia and Frida. Now, if we take the example of figures of speech, there is this beautiful dialogue. I um, mean, it's not actually a dialogue, but it has the feeling of a dialogue where Toni Morrison talks about how a group of women are talking. And the description that Toni Morrison offers is as if it is a dance not a matter of speech. She talks about how there are curtsies and shimmies in the language being used by the women in their conversation. Now going on to an example that we come across in the second novel, Sula, uh, there is a scene of Henna Peace who is burning up. But even this scene, this tormenting scene of a person being burnt up is described like a weird dance by Tony Morrison. Let me move on to another novel, uh, Jazz. In Jazz, we see that the city of New York is beautifully explained and the tone in which the city is explained makes us feel like there is a background music playing of jazz, which brings alive all the incidents which take place in the novel. If you take the example of Beloved, there are certain lines um, by Paul D which talk about his great love of America, a country where the African-American community has faced a lot of hardship, but he still talks about loving the country. And he talks about how the flowers in the country are so beautiful and the flowers were what led him from the South to the North. And the language of preaching, you know, we have this uh, incident of baby sucks in Beloved, who is a beautiful preacher in a clearing in the woods. And similarly, we see Richard Meissner in Paradise, who's also a preacher. And so this shows that Toni Morrison has acquainted herself with so many different types of languages spoken by uh, different communities within the African American community, so many dialects to, uh, to speak. And in this way, by her mastery of language, Though she talks about the trauma of slavery, 
she has brought in a lot of liberation in her writing and with that i conclude thank you um christy ma'am yes no yeah christy uh, ma'am yes ma'am yes uh, sorry sorry yes ma'am yes uh she concluded yes that was a nice nice presentation which you were talking about tony morrison it's it's a just tough novel and it was a nice presentation upanisha and uh, i don't have you know it worked nicely i don't have much of questions if any other people have questions you can ask her. Yeah. okay next participant now no ma'am thank only you one only one we want to give it uh her willingness to present the paper so thank you punisha thank you very much for your presentation thank you ma'am thank you okay so now we'll conclude the session with a vote of thanks by ms jos rojade hmm so word is so small it is speaks as volumes of volumes it gives me great honor and privilege to render the vote of thanks on this memorable day first and foremost i humbly thank our lord almighty who showed his blessing on us making this program a resounding success on behalf of all of us i would like to express our deep gratitude to our chief guest dr j kristi palina assistant professor head of the department of english and iqc coordinator bishop caldwell college tutukri who graced us with her thought provoking words on a graphic descriptions of conflict in william golding's lord of the flies for this memorable session thank you ma'am thank you ma'am i extend my sincere thanks to our principal reverend dr sister mary gilda and vice principal mrs c sakti lakshmi who guided us in all our endeavors It's my pleasure to express a word of gratitude to our department HOD Dr. I Angeline Priya and our faculty members of Holy Cross for their valuable contribution and dedication in this program. Finally, my heartfelt thanks to all the faculty faculties and research scholars of various colleges who attended this program. Once again, I thank you all for your valuable presence this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So with this, we'll we'll end this program. And uh, thank you, participants, for your participation um, today. So we will meet tomorrow at the same time in this Google Meet with the same link. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you.